In regards to console gaming, Xbox got pummeled this generation. They lost sight of what made the ecosystem great, but they could rebound next gen and get back to its 360 glory days. Here I will explain how. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a huge favor? You know what I'm saying? Before we get knee deep in this one, you know what I mean? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications, please. So you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. All right, so here's the deal. Microsoft has lost a generation. And as an Xbox enthusiast, I can say that they've lost it in a disappointing fashion. You know what I'm saying? They had the minds and hearts last gen pulling the rug from under the behemoth sony you know what i'm saying but they let it all slip away all's not lost however microsoft enthusiasts we can get them back into shape however if they want to get back into shape microsoft and now xbox they're gonna have to be competitive for the hearts and minds of the gaming mass and they need to do some reflection so let's help them do so by looking at what made them great where they fell off and let's grade where they're at now with their pronounced initiatives to be better suited to take lead next gen. Yo, but first we, we gotta talk about what made the system great. And to me, and to a lot of Xbox enthusiasts, there were four pillars. Those four pillars were power, innovation, experience, and marketing, all right? So let's talk a little bit about pillars. Did you know that when you have a company logo, that a lot of times if you're a, a bigger Fortune 500 company, there's more baked into your logo than just aesthetics. It actually, ha it actually has a meaning. Like for instance, the Hyundai symbol. The H in the Hyundai is a represent representation of two people actually shaking hands. You know what I'm saying? You can look all this stuff up. Now I haven't been able to find anything in regards to Microsoft having such uh, meaning to their logo or whatever. But what it meant to the gaming consumer visually is that you know they were tearing into the gaming scene you know what I mean it meant that they had a badassery to them that was catered to the hardcore regardless of that we have a new regime in there they have different practices a different mind state and I think they could still exercise those mind states and those practices while still entertaining the hardcore but they have to have four pillars let's look at where they stack as far as how they entered the game entertaining these four pillars and where they're at now in this generation and lastly again what is their grade going into the next gen first let's look at how they perform in regards to power and performance with any of their machines they started off in the sixth gen with the og xbox having the most powerful machine undoubtedly and having the best performing multiplayer type the seventh gen with the 360 they continued that trend, even though people were boasting that the, uh, the cell processor in the PlayStation 3 was more powerful, it didn't come to fruition in the multiplayer game. However, this generation, the eighth generation, with the Xbox One, they have fell short. They came out the gate with a weaker box, it was more expensive, and it had a lot of functionality and power geared towards multimedia, which, you know, was the beginning of their downfall in the end. Now. As far as the future is concerned, it looks like the new regime is going to be leveraging the Surface team that's working on the phenomenal Surface uh, Pro books and stuff like that, the laptops for the Microsoft brand, that they're going to leverage them to build future consoles. That being the case, the question is, what's the price going to be? And because we don't know what the price is going to be and we've got some, some rumblings that these are going to be very expensive consoles, you know what I mean, as far as anything that is powerful, I don't know. I'd have to grade them a C right them a C right now. Not enough has been given in that area for us to uh, be excited about. Now, as far as innovation, they came out the gate with innovation again with the OG Xbox in the sixth generation. Broadband only. Frag party. System link. They've continued to the trend. Uh, last generation, the seventh gen. Adding gamer score. A more fluid party chat. And then the multimedia apps as well. You know what I mean? And particularly for me, accessibility to demo. Now, this gen, the 8th gen with the Xbox One, 
really not too much. The biggest innovative push is to fight for backwards compatibility and for crossplay. Neither one of those are offerings of something innovative that has never been experienced before. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as the innovation that they're um, gearing for next gen, they're talking about making all of your games portable to no matter where you're at via your phone, your tablet, whatever the case may be. Now, the tech would be awesome if it is uh, possible to have the same low latency that some of the NVIDIA Shield and some of the, the, the Steam Link applications have. That would be awesome. You know what I mean? Now, the problem is, is that some of the devs have alluded particularly where that Microsoft or Xbox likes to have these low fidelity uh, type of experiences because it's, it's easily transportable to those devices. So that's a problem, you know what I mean? Uh, with that being said, everything that I'm hearing about the tech and how Microsoft is involved in it sounds promising. I've experienced it in-house. If they can do it out-house, that'd be great. So I rate them a B. Now let's talk game experiences, all right? Microsoft was known, 6th gen with the OG Xbox, to bring you experiences never seen on console, you know what I mean? Um, games like Knights of the Old Republic, Halo, Jade Empire, those type of games that you've normally seen on the PC and people were like, oh, you could never get this to work on, on a console. Microsoft proved the naysayers wrong. They've upped the ante last gen with the Xbox 360, with Gears of War, Mass Effect, and Bioshock. You know what I mean? Ken Levine told you, if it wasn't for Microsoft, Bioshock would have never come to fruition. And I personally, as a, as a huge fan, cannot imagine that being the case. Eighth gen, not so much. Now, what do we have? Not saying they have horrible exclusives, but what do we have in comparison to those other exclusives? Well, we had Sunset Overdrive, Quantum Break, Sea of Thieves. Now, again, I get it games like Mass Effect and Bioshock were only time exclusives, but Microsoft put a big footprint in making those games come to fruition. But we're looking at the games that they made come to fruition this generation, and they don't even compare. You know what I mean? Again, not horrible games, but they don't even compare, and they fell flat in that area. Ninth gen, were they were they suited in this area? Well, they have what is called quadruple A studios with the initiative, but they've alluded to wanting to emulate games like Uncharted and Horizon Zero Dawn out of these out of this quadruple A studio. That's not creating your own footprint like you did in the previous two gens. So in that regards, per the information we have right now, I give them a D. Lastly, let's talk marketing. Sixth gen, they went full out. They had commercials celebrity endorsements if you're old enough and telling my age remember Shaq you know what I'm saying with the frag parties and all that other stuff and and the auxiliary events their XO events and their um, E3s they they went all out they carried the trend over in the seventh gym last gym with the 360 particularly in commercials and advertisements they were so much better and so much groundbreaking and their E3s and even the XO event that they had last gym was phenomenal this generation Poor commercial usage, poor usage of social media, and poor analytics to help them connect to their core. You've had prime people in the marketing department say, we don't really do commercials because looking at our analytics, commercials don't work. Tell that to Sony. Now, with that being said, going into the ninth gen, they are doing an XO event late this gen, the eighth generation. So we're gonna see how that's going to come to fruition. And a lot of people said that that's going to be a bold move because if you're bringing this back, you better have something to show. Now, leading into it, it still seems that their advertising is too nuanced. It's not invigorating to the core and to the masses. It relies too much on word of mouth. And the problem is the word of mouth gets trampled out by the media and outlets who over talk the, 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 the talking points that they're hoping that their fanboys will spread about. You know what I mean? 1080p makes you a better game, you know? So you gotta, Microsoft has to come to grips with that and they gotta do a lot better. Therefore, because it doesn't seem like that they're geared yet in that direction in the right way, I give them an F. So overall, if you average everything together as far as where they're headed, I'm um, going into next gen, it's a D plus. And that's not good. But here's a solution. I told you I'm gonna talk solutions. Here's a solution for Microsoft. Microsoft needs a rebranding of their logo of everything. One that illustrates a focus on all four of these pillars. Those four pillars are execution. We will provide you with the best looking and performing experiences anywhere. Secondly, innovation. Our technology will send all you think 
that is possible with gaming and to hyperdrive. Thirdly, distinction. The titles we bring to you and influence will feel new and groundbreaking. And lastly, alliance. We will connect to you, the gamer, and ensure our community far surpasses what is model and what is stellar in comparison to anything else out there. This, my friends, is the new expo. Now, let that soak in. Think about that. I'm not Aaron Greensburg. I'm not the people in the marketing. But we need Xbox execs to think in this mind state. I get it. They want to reach the 2.1 billion, and they can do that. But they got to have a big slither of the pie outreaching to the core and this is the best way you can do it trust me take it from someone that's still sticking it out with you even though someone with my passion has been called fanboys and and you know all this other toxic stuff by xbox executives i'm still sticking it out with you guys all right and with that being said that's it from your boy mm2k hey let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comments below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me and come at your boy. It don't make me no difference. You know what I'm saying? And if you did like what you heard, you know where to follow me or where to find me. I'm on the I'm on the corner of every boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Check out the links below to follow me. Yo, I got a show with your boys, Dirk Griggity and TRS, the Fusion Wolf. It's called Scram Punks. We air it every Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Check out my channel for more details on that. Lastly, support my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. Yo, check out that Patreon. We got a special Patreon show that we're running um, next to whatever Z puts out there as well. My, me and my man Nethals, we, we got a show coming up soon. Another one, yo, it's for the Xbox enthusiasts. Check out that, that Discord link, you know what I'm saying? Check out that gear, it's fly. And as always, you know what I'm saying? There's hope for Microsoft. But that we can't want this more than them. So they gotta get with the program. And if they do, we will all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.